Welcome and namaste, Professor Sood. It is indeed our honor to have you address this August audience today and launch the Mantan platform, sir. May I request you to kind of take the podium, please? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope I am audible. Uh, yes, sir. First of all, let me add my greetings uh, to all of you on our 76th Independence Day as we mark the 75th Ajadi Ka Aprit Mahotsav. There couldn't have been a better day to launch Banthan, a platform that promises to augment our efforts to build and nurture industry participation in R&D. Since independence, if we look at it, our R&D expenditure into SNT in academia, space, atomic energy, health sector, telecom, etc. have mostly been supported by government sector. Even now, our gross expenditure on R&D is about 0.69% of GDP. Of course, this needs to be improved. But also, what needs to be improved is the participation from industry. Right now, it is about 0.15 to 0.2% of the GDP. Now, you will immediately realize that this is far below the share in other developing countries like USA and South Korea. In the last few years, however, the partnerships between academia and industry have been encouraging and it has worked well when two sides have come together to solve the problems or the challenges faced. So let me give you one or two examples here. Now, ensuring quality, accessibility, and affordability of healthcare services in a large country like ours is challenging. The development of technology based solutions to revamp healthcare at different levels has brought together the healthcare industry, state governments, healthcare startups, and philanthropic foundations. The entire country in the last two years was witness to the ramping up of healthcare facilities in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. In this context, uh, from our office, uh, from the Principal Scientific Advisor's office, uh, two efforts from Strategic Alliance Division and the Agni mission, uh, which is done in collaboration with Invest India, have been very remarkable. We, uh, uh, we cannot thank enough how these uh, hospitals uh, came up in a very short time, the fastly deployed, which was all done in the participation of industry, startups, and philanthropic organizations. And uh, the way we ramped up our diagnostic uh, capability is also something where this collaboration really showed so very positive results. What it says is that we have momentum now and it needs to be maintained by nurturing these partnerships that were of course built during a crisis. And another point which we perhaps should look at is the sector of education. Now, under the new education policy, the government of India has laid great emphasis on breaking traditional pedagogical methods to ensure holistic learning. This cannot be possible if we do not have generous participation from industry and foundation. Now, support extended for improving astronomy education, skill development in underprivileged children, and improving STEM education for young women over the last two years in, in uh, our office uh, efforts is truly heartening. And I hope that much, much more will be done in coming years. Now, at this stage, 
it will be important for us to stop, look back at our learning, and then move forward and see how industry and academia can be structurally brought together in a in a harmonized way to uh, uh, work towards the science and technology ecosystem so that it has a huge societal impact. Working towards a common mission will only make both industry and academia much better. Now, when it comes to academia, we need to work on big problems through fundamental science by being mindful of the real world application of its work. Because academia over the ages, over the uh, centuries, has been the cradle of fundamental knowledge and uh, subsequently, which will get translated for societal impact. Their research, the re research which, we, which is done in academia should have a tangible impact uh, either in short term or in long term. Now, capacity building in universities through the development of new skills should also be a focus of industry academia partnership. Here again, the, in the two incentives which have been taken forward by the Office of uh, Principal Scientific Advisor are again something which I should mention. One is the uh, which was mentioned in the uh, short video which was shown 15 centers of excellence in various uh, academic institutes with the help of uh, industry participation and the six science and technology innovation clusters to bring together the startups the academia the uh, local uh, ecosystem and so on so these efforts are already uh, showing huge impact and this needs to be strengthened. When we talk about societal impact, we always think of translational research. And this I think, uh, needless to say, has to be based on fundamental science because then we will have much, much more impactful implication for the society. Bridging universities and industries will be important to aid translational research, uh, which, is in, which is really coming from the discoveries emanating from studying problems that are unique to our country. We must congratulate ourselves at this stage that several such partnerships have been built that are reaping dividends for us in various sectors such as agriculture, health, education, and others. We should not forget that this is happening only in pockets. We need to amplify the number of these partnerships and deepen the impact of the current partnerships across the country. We have come some way, but you will all agree that more work is required to improve linkages between the startup ecosystem and manufacturers to push technology development in sectors where India employs some global presence. But also, it is in the country's interest to increase that presence. Here, the deep tech startups, again, is the need of the R and we need to amplify that aspect of startup ecosystem much more. As our nation celebrates 75th year of independence, I take the privilege of launching the Manthan platform, the creation of which, in my view, will be a pivotal step in building, nurturing, and celebrating the outcome of partnership between various stakeholders of science, technology, and innovation ecosystem in India. I am pleased to launch Manthan today. Jai Hind.
Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would uh, like to join everybody who here uh, to congratulate each one of you on this uh, 75 years of independence. Today, as we celebrate the 75 years of independence, we should reminisce our journey in science, technology, and innovation in the last 75 years and how the successful journey has actually positioned us in the world. So today's function is one such step in this direction. It gives, gives me immense pleasure to address this gathering on the launch of the Manthan platform. The Manthan platform is uniquely designed. It will facilitate collaborations focusing on R&D aligned with national priorities and sustainable development goals, emerging technologies and technologies for the social impact. Now today, India is recognized as one of the world's largest economies. India has made tremendous strides in its economic and social development in the past two decades. Since 1991, government of India has opened up the economy to more global competition. However, for the country of this size to further grow over the next few decades, it needs to transform its science, innovation and research development, that is SIRD landscape. We all acknowledge that the Indian third space is dependent on government investment, government infrastructure, government institutions and bodies. The government-backed institutes like IITs, ICERs, uh, National Labs, Central Universities, TIFR, ISC, all these form the backbone of R&D in the country. India's R&D expenditure or investment in R&D from 2017-18 has increased by uh, to 1,23,000 in 2018-19. In spite of this, India's GERD, that is the gross expenditure on R&D, was only 0.65% of GDP in 2018-19, as just mentioned by Professor Sood himself. This is among the lowest in the world, and even today it is less than 1% of GDP. Now, over the last decade, India as a policy has laid emphasis on innovation as a growth strategy. Today, India is transforming into an innovation-driven economy, Innovation is at the forefront of India's Make in India and Atmanirbhar Bharat initiatives. The aim is not only to make in India, but also to innovate in India. The startup ecosystem is one such step in this direction. The fact that India has been instrumental in the development of COVID-19 vaccine validates the success of this policy focus. Now, as we enter into a new decade and explore ways of recovering from the shock of a pandemic, Innovation has gained further importance and hence the need to strengthen the innovative capacity. Today, India's ranking in the Global Innovation Index has climbed 35 notches from 81st in 2015-16 to 46 in 2021. And we are the world's th third largest startup ecosystem. Now, in order to make India enter into top 10 rankings, we need to improve our GERD from the present 0.65 to at least 1% in the next five years and to at least 2% in 2047 when India celebrates its sanitary years of independence. Now, for achieving this, India needs to focus primarily on five areas. The first thing is we need to increase our R&D expenditure from the industry. While the government has been instrumental in guiding India's growth trajectory, yet if India needs to place itself in the global arena, the private sector has to be the primary driver of national growth and development. And this is, it can achieve only through massive investment in R&D. There is a need to increase even the forward direct investment into R&D, which is just 0.13% of the total FDI in 2019-20. The second is we need to increase our investment in science and innovation. Here again, the private sector has the potential to transform India's science, innovation, and R&D landscape through massive investments and support to academia through R&D. The third most important point is to increase the industry academia collaboration. Although this is being talked for the last 15 years, yet we have to acknowledge that the R&D collaboration among industry academia is still very less as institutionalized framework for industry academia connect is still absent in this country. Concerted efforts are going on to boost this ecosystem which uh, uh, Professor Sood has just mentioned. Our office has been making this effort through the SNT city clusters. In addition, the Strategic Alliance Division of our office has worked with 300 plus premier research institutes and 50,000 plus startups and innovators. 
It has also catalyzed 300 plus industry academia partnerships on various topics that is like agriculture, climate change, uh, electric vehicles, energy efficiency, biomedical, chemicals, and so on. The fourth thing that we need to stress on is increase our scientific publication. India has to increase its uh, share in scientific publication. India has been consistently ranked among the world's top nations in the parameter of our research publications. We have over 1,000 higher education institutes and nearly 700 national research laboratories. India possesses great potential in promoting this innovation. And the last is increase our international patent filings. As of 2021, India has granted a record of 58,000 plus patents. But it is far behind other competitive economies such as China, which has 5.3 lakh uh, patents, and US, which has 3.52 lakh patents. Thus, in summary, if India has to improve its economy, it has to improve its science, technology, and innovation capabilities. For this, it has to focus on intensifying industries' expenditure in R&D, development of a seamless mechanism conducive for industry academia collaboration should continue. Now, this creation of this Manthan platform is once a step in this direction. Now, Manthan means churning, that is churning of knowledge or information. Thus, a Manthan platform basically helps in connecting the opportunities that exist with the innovators through information exchange. Thus, a Manthan platform is basically helping in connecting the opportunities that exist with the innovators through information exchange. It is an enabling platform to match the demand side with the supply side. Manthan can be used by industries, foundations, philanthropic organizations, central and state governments, foreign governments, embassies. They can post their opportunities, challenges, or problem statements on the demand side. And on the supply side, the platform can be used by academic and research institutes, startups, and, all, and so on. Now, I will not dwell into the details of this platform because my immediate, uh, uh, the following me is the speaker is Dr. Sapna Koti, who has been the architect of this platform. And she's going to speak in detail on this. And she'll also be elucidating on the roles played by each and every contributor in making this platform. So with this, I would like to conclude my speech. I take this opportunity to once again congratulate our partners, sponsors, and developers, and extend my best wishes to the users of this platform to make this platform very efficient, utilize it, and also send us feedback. Thank you so much, and Jai Hind. Happy Independence Day to all of you. And uh, in case you're wondering why we chose today uh, to uh, release this uh, Manthan platform, it has a major meaning. One is that we usually remember the yesteryears and we remember all the freedom fighters uh, that were there. However, today, as uh, we finished 75 years, I think the most important is our researchers and innovators and how they are also some kind of freedom fighters. They are working on freedom from poverty, from freedom of illiteracy, freedom of environmental issues, and so on. And it's quite a lonely um, journey for most of them. So during the pandemic, we realized that there are several innovations that would have helped the pandemic. And they were pouring in like left, right, and center, and we had no idea how to manage this, how to evaluate the innovations, how to scale up, how to facilitate funding, and uh, how to facilitate manufacturing, especially during the lockdown. This is when, uh, you know, we actually there was a birth of this strategic alliances uh, division per se. We made uh, literally 800 calls per week, 30 request calls per day, several emails per month, requesting industry foundations, global foundations, and all other high network income and well-meaning individuals to support us. Despite these challenges, we actually managed to do a lot. We developed indigenous reagents, which were actually being imported from Korea. We developed testing kits. We had a whole marketplace, a global marketplace, which TCS had offered pro bono. We also did BSL2 mobile labs across with the design of DRDO and Indian Institute of Science, mass PPEs, hospitals, as Professor Sood mentioned, and so on. And it was largely thanks to the industries, global foundations, Indian foundations, and all the philanthropists of not only this nation, but outside as well. And that is when we realize 
that if this can work so well here, why don't we extrapolate it in different areas which are important for us? And from then on, the journey started and we have worked on um, waste management, circular economy, renewable energy um, uh, and um, um, and so on. So water and so on. So about 13 centers of excellence, 800 crores, uh, 1800 crores worth of funding to um, mostly the academia as well as startups were undertaken during the year. Uh, despite that, we realized that you know there is something like a huge ecosystem of 10 million 94,432 faculty members in premier institutes, uh, more than uh, uh, 3 million of researchers, 73,205 startups and so on. So how does a three member team from the office of PSA manage this quantity and, uh, and the quality of uh, and the volumes that we are talking about? It was pretty overwhelming. And that is how there was a birth of this idea of Manthan which is a platform for, as, as all of you have been speaking, of different stakeholders who want to come together and make a difference, make a social impact. It, it, it also has space for industry R&D because finally industry R&D gets into manufacturing and manufacturing gets you employment. So the first thing that we did was we benchmarked quite a few platforms and there are several partners who opened up their platforms to us. Uh, and especially in this, uh, when it is so competitive, it's very difficult when when uh, you know platforms have to be shared. However, we had several of them uh, you know showcasing their platforms, and we looked at what would be the unique unique selling uh, proposition for our platform, and so that we don't duplicate um, the you know the efforts because funding is funding, be it industry, government, individual, it's precious and it should not be wasted. So after we benchmarked, uh, we realized, OK, now is the time to build the blueprint. And here is when we thought of a couple of pillars, which are very key pillars for organizations and stakeholders to work together. The first pillar we thought of was the opportunity pillar, which is where uh, problem statements of industries can be posted, opportunities of, uh, say, factory premises for startups, uh, funding for R&D, funding for innovations, um, consumables or any uh, offer for that matter can be um, posted here. This goes and reaches to researchers and innovators who have chosen a particular thematic area in that particular in, in this platform, and then they can submit their online proposals. Once it is received by the industry, if the industry requires uh, subject matter experts, they can dip into the platform and tag the subject matter experts depending on the thematic area. Uh, and then they can do a peer review as well of these proposals so that the best can be chosen. Uh, the MOU and the funding is outside of this platform. As far as possible, we would like to keep this platform close, closed to only the knowledge sharing, uh, the proposal sharing and so on. So anything to do with funding is outside of this. The second pillar again is a very important pillar because as I mentioned that there are several proposals that we have already received. So we realized that there has to be certain way in which this can be showcased on the platform. And hence we have something like the science technology innovation aligned SDGs, sustainable development goals. So these are the technologies and proposals which are aligned to sustainable development goals as well as our national missions. So there are certain sections, so as all of you are aware, there are 17 SDGs, uh, right from zero poverty to water, environment, uh, skill development and so on. Uh, so uh, in each of these SDGs, you would have thematic areas, about three or four thematic areas in one particular SDG. Under that thematic area, you would first see a market research and KPMG has come forward to share some of their reports so that the startups do not duplicate their efforts. They know exactly what's happening in that particular thematic area at that particular time. And then we also have R&D proposals which need funding, so that would be showcased. Market ready innovations again, because the startups have several such innovations which would be relevant to that thematic area, so that would be arranged as well and showcased. And then you have uh, the subject matter experts, as I mentioned, on that um, thematic area. And finally, fellowships or any kind of uh, support that the students require. So this is a showcase so that industries and the philanthropists can come, choose what they want, handpick their projects and support outside of the platform. The third uh, pillar is the industry R&D pillar. As we are aware, 
Industry R&D is a very tricky situation because of the fact that uh, almost all the sectors are very competitive within that sector. So this is a completely classified and a China walled R&D. Even the Office of PSA does not get a peep into which industry R&D opportunity is being shared with which institute. But there's an entire uh, process flow over there and one could engage without others coming to know of it. And of course, there is non-classified industry R&D in case uh, people are interested. The next pillar is on exhibition of innovations. We have seen that a lot of good proposals come to us. Several of them are written very well. Pitching is amazing and so on. But when it comes to innovation, when we actually look at something uh, uh, you know, uh, on the ground, we find it's not real. It's not scalable. Uh, it, it is a shoddy work and so on. So hence, instead of traveling across, we thought we should have a virtual innovation exhibition hall where people can call for these innovations and uh, support what, whichever they find the best. Um, the last pillar is the virtual auditorium as well as virtual meetings. Like I said, it could be a foundation, an NGO, an academic institute or a state government. Four of them can get into a meeting room huddle up and discuss any project that they want. In addition to that, we have certain segments in this platform. As Professor Sood had mentioned about women in STEM, it's a very important area and hence you can connect to the women uh, if, if they are interested in connecting back with you and uh, engage on any uh, thematic area that is of their expertise. Similarly, opportunities and projects uh, or special projects from the office also can, can be uploaded there. Industry can upload their opportunities to, uh, to the women in STEM. Second and very important is the uh, government section. The government section has the state government as well as the central government. The whole idea is how can um, innovators support the government? Now it can be an industry innovator, it could be a MSME innovator, it could be a startup or it could be academia. Here we don't need to segregate uh, uh, any of them because this is not CSR. So there is no schedule seven and so on. It's only innovation and the line ministry. If the line ministry likes the innovation, they can adopt that. Uh, we have about 300 plus government problem statements today, and we're happy to upload them so that uh, the government also gets um, benefited out of this. International uh, uh, partnerships is another important thing. We work very closely with 10 countries right now, and hopefully we'll increase that um, uh, through this platform international uh, innovation challenges, international opportunities, exchange, knowledge exchange, and so on. All of that is within this segment. School innovation, again, is very important for us. We have tied up with UNICEF, and we also have Atel Innovations. So any opportunity which comes through the industry or uh, um, uh, any foundation can be showcased here, and there could be a complete engagement on this innovation. School education comes under the SDGs. And so STEM education, again, um, be it national, national uh, gamification or STEM education made easy and so on, those things come under the SDG, whereas school innovations come under this segment. Uh, last but not the least, we have a very important section, which is the data analytics section uh, for us to know how is this platform actually supporting us. It, it would help us maybe five years down the line, two years down the line or 10 years down the line to know how the data slicing is actually helping us. What are the different data points and how they're culminating? So for instance, institute wise, how are we doing? Cluster wise, how are we doing? Geographically, are, um, is there a support that is required? Thematic areas, for in instance, if energy needs to be pulled up, hydrogen needs to have uh, you know, more uh, drive and so on within the platform. Uh, what kind of social impact we have made, what are, what are the success stories and so on. So the data analytics piece is very important for uh, especially Professor Sood, uh, Dr. Manny and the section owners. I'll come to the section owners soon. And then finally, we need to look at why the platform is great and uh, um, you know it will of course take time to mature and uh, stabilize and so on. We need to have a roadmap for future because this is a complex platform, it's not a portal. It has a lot of overlaps of processes. It has a lot of complexity built into it. And hence, we need to ensure that the handholding to innovators and researchers uh, needs to be done to industries and so on, so that opportunities come seamlessly on this platform. So we need to have several workshops planned, deep handholding, uh, and a lot of patience and cooperation 
which we have already witnessed that uh, the industries have provided so far. So we are banking on that as well. Um, so, um, uh, you know, given that this was a complex um, uh, journey, we had several, uh, uh, you know, well-meaning people behind this. And I would like to just uh, you know, call out some of them, though, of course, there's a formal vote of thanks and I don't want to kill that. Uh, but I would like to just uh, call out a couple of people who have been very, very important. Uh, first of all, this is a crowdsourced platform and which itself shows that industry and government ca came together to work on this. Uh, it didn't take more than uh, five, ten minutes for Mr. Lakshmi Narayan to understand the importance of this platform, and he uh, supported us from his personal account itself. Uh, Act Grants, again, is an organization which supports startups. They also co-funded this. Uh, Dr. Manny, as soon as she came in there, she felt that, okay, uh, if the industry has funded um, uh, us, we should also look at uh, you know, co-funding. So she put in some money there. So that is how we got the funding part of the story out of the window. Second part is the blueprint. This again was a very difficult thing. Uh, while I can uh, you know, envision this or have a broad architecture, we need very uh, technical people to actually uh, create this entire thing into a technical specs and, um, and scope of work and so on. So the first person I would like to thank is Mr. Krishnan from IIT Madras Alumni Association. He and his team supported us in developing some of these concepts. Um, uh, Ms. Nimisha Gupta was us, uh, with us for a long time again. Uh, she's developed a scope of work along with me and Mr. Krishnan, and we, we did a detailed scope of work. Mr. Brahmanand Jha, I can't thank you enough for being there with us from throughout the journey, from the beginning till the end. I just had to make a call and he would be there. Professor Jalote, he, he provided a lot of his inputs. Uh, uh, Professor uh, Srini from IIM Bangalore, he has a great um, uh, knowledge of different platforms, and he told us what not to do, and so on. And then we had a complete advisory committee members. I'm not uh, going to name each of them, um, uh, uh, but they were there with us through and through. Uh, during the RFP stage, uh, Dr. Preeti and her team, uh, my colleagues, um, uh, helped a lot um, uh, to shape it up. Um, nothing could have been done without NSEIT, and I think I'm very grateful to Mr. Ganesh and his team, Kostab, Sandeep, and several others who supported us to build this platform. I think they took the maximum brunt uh, of, uh, of uh, and, and the maximum, um, you know, um, uh, work that has been done here is through them. Uh, during the testing uh, stage, uh, you know, um, Mr. Anand Krishnan, uh, I've always known him to, uh, you know, think much bigger and much stronger. And uh, as um, a Tata value as well, he's from TCS. He uh, supported us with testing. Uh, especially when it's in the same domain, and yet he uh, said that we will, uh, you know, support you in the UI testing, and we'll also look at the architecture and so on uh, uh, on an overall basis. Of course, my office team uh, itself, uh, Vibhor, Aditi, Rahul, uh, couldn't have done uh, without you. Dheeraj has been that one soldier through and through, uh, from the beginning till the end, and he's he has been supported by Mr. Jha, but both of them together, amazing work. Um, and uh, of course, um, uh, you know, both the past as well as the present uh, principal scientific advisor have been very supportive and encouraging. And Dr. Maini, especially, I can't thank you enough. And last but not the least, I, I would like all the stakeholders to come together, own some of these sections, think that this is your own platform, work together because this is a democratic platform and an offering on Independence Day to all of you. Thank you so much and Jai Hind.